So I wanted to unpack while I was actually unpacking from this event that I had last week, because I'm a bit late, um, how I felt about what happened last Friday. So I was a panelist at an event um, and we were talking about, we were talking about epistemological warfare. We were talking about how colonialism has, has been an archetypal practice of that. How you fragment societies, communities, ideas, cultures, fragment and hier and put them into hierarchies, um, which also serve to to degrade them and negate them. Um, but I think that epistemological kind of warfare has probably been there since the beginning of time as well, um, in in the conflict that we manifest. <laughs> um, and to this event we were specifically looking like kind of like art and culture in terms of resistance, resilience, practice, um, indigenous perspectives, all these different kinds of things, you know, paralysis is everywhere. And it was on this panel with these stunning, stunning, stunning women, stunning women, um, voracious in like in nature and in, in, in their intellectuality, if, if that's such a word, in their practice and their culture, just in their being, you know, you just resonate with people because it's just like, I don't know they're just on it they're they're on it and I know I want to say like free like just focus and literally vibrating resonant resonating um resonating yeah there's a resonance vibration that they kind of manifest which you just can't help but be seduced by really and, and you fall into and then the conversations you have you know so I didn't feel like I was on panel I felt like I was just chatting ideas with friends and it was you know it was a close environment as well and we put all these pieces set them up so I'd, I'd bought some pieces such as um such as the calypso piece from Turner contemporary um and i'd worn one of my kind of costumes from Notting hill because i was trying i wanted to wear it because it was like it isn't enough to hang it it's something that's lived and the one that i have you know you've got feathers broken bit of crystals coming off you've got do you know what I mean? They probably run stains on it and everything because it's it's what it is. It was lived, it was there, you know. I sweated and danced to that thing for probably eight to ten hours, you know. But to me, I've always thought that, like, when I think of the Notting Hill Carnival, it was like the people that put that together were starting from a place of liberation. They were starting from a place, like, their gaze was already ancestral when they created it because with everything that was going on, they took some of the most greatest, strongest, incredible, diverse, complex pluriversal kind of practices which is that of carnival which is performance it's costume it's political it's it's the political it's the social it's you know it's in the street it's mass it's um it's subversion it's 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 so many things it's all just, it's all those things and being there and, and being with people and um you know and they, you know many times that's you know if it's your family that's you know that's my mum you know that's been my sister my brother my cousins different pe people that you haven't seen in ages people that you've grown up with you know friends of friends of friends of family that are community which means they're family which means if they bollock you in the street do you know what i mean you're going to be hearing about it by the time you get home just just life living you know just like living and uh that's why I thought that costume in that context was so important to wear it. And I put on my makeup and stuff too, just to get my baker bag. And, uh, and why we were talking about these things. Actually, no, let's backtrack a minute. I think one of the key things here of what I'm about to try and understand is this idea of of when we're looking at decolonization, decoloniality, whatever that is, in whatever context we're thinking of, right? But in the essence of what I'm talking about now in terms of living something, because you can theorize all you want, but it's how it's embodied in practice. It's how it, it's how things are lived. It's the realities of, you know, structural structural barriers of, of advantage, of privilege, of so many different things of that, That the fact is that these things are lived and there's real there's real implications to what we study to what we feel to what we practice to what we theorize to ideation um and when i was when we were talking we were there but we did not know because of the kind gentleman that was monitoring the chat function 
that people were just littering it with very, very extreme racist things about myself in the panel, saying a lot of words that would not be very nice, a lot of words beginning, beginning with a lot of letters that have a lot of genocide and history and things tied to them. So me in this, in this headpiece, you know, sat there <laughs> talking about how you live something, how you're sitting there and I like, talk about, you know, my mum and the push chair holding on to the handle, do you know what I mean? While well, you're seeing these people in these ravishing costumes going past, do you know what I mean? That you've seen in carnival from God knows how many places and how many ways, you know, from the community that you've grown up within. That are so many different islands. So whether it's Trini, whether it's Barbados, you know, whether you're then in the UK and it's the carnivals and things that are being created here, the living involvement of these things, of these things bubbling, always bubbling of what's happening, of what's, of that performance that feels like you're going through many, many periods of time, connecting with places beyond your present. You know, I think, oh no, I was proud of that. You know, this is things that I, it's not even a sense of pride, it's a sense of, empowerment you know empowerment because I was joking I was saying this is who I am all the time I'm wearing a carnival costume all the time this is how I see me this is how I feel me do you know what I mean it's it's the bombastic and the performance and radical imagination and sensuality and the feminist with rich masculinity and all of those things all of those things so when people are calling me, you know, littering, you know, around you, words that are meant to negate life and being. And I sat there and I didn't know, but I was smiling to him because I was just jubilant. Do you know what I mean? And then afterwards I found it was strange because I, it didn't really resonate with me when I was told what was happening and that they had to close it down and reopen the link. To, but a lot of people had left and some friends of those on the panel had said how bad it was which is why they left which says a lot but I don't know after the panel even after I heard for some reason I, f I didn't really resonate I felt I don't know like it was like I was still wearing my costume I was still performing do you know what I mean it was like okay and part of me was glad I wasn't told during the time we were having the panel because I thought that would automatically reposition the discussions what we're talking about about the production of so many of these knowledges of these cultures of of work that people do that doesn't need to you know that 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 stands on its own has stand on its own for so long you know and that many institutions really is you know can be described as being so behind in terms of in terms of those kind of conversations and productions and, and what happens you know that the idea of not only even an idea the reality of of the undercommons and and how that's lived and, and the production I mean not because you're putting it in a journal or whatever but because it's because it's what you are it's what you live it enables survival and beyond it, it, it is it is the seed of how you thrive you know what I mean it's 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 the table of how you enrich yourself and your family and your culture and who you are and your ideas and everything else and you know over the weekend I was waiting for it to hit waiting for that sadness waiting for that pain and waiting for that trauma and waiting for this kind of negation of self and it didn't really come don't get me wrong I felt hurt in a way but because of the conversations and the people in there and the things I also felt one the detritus that was being put forward was the, also the very thing legitimating everything that we was, was being discussed but then the other part of it was I think because of the company because of the residents of these just kind of interstellar kind of personalities sharing you know so many ideas and and you know and, and and the people we were conversing with as well because people were sharing within the conversation it was just like I don't know it dissipated it was fragmented under that weight under that level of enrichment and I wanted to unpack it because I was just like, what happened there? Why was that different? Why was that in a place? Mm -hmm.
you know, what was different this time in this this fight maybe? What was different? Why didn't it it did not connect with me? I mean, yeah, partly it's the costume. I mean, come on. That's a power. That's a powerful place, but it's something else, you know. Something else in that. Or maybe thinking of so many things that have happened in the last few years, in the last couple of years, maybe. It's also with a lot of the kind of protest and the, the paradigm shifts that we've seen within society, within political, within the sub, you know, within identity, subjectivity, within people, within places, communities. I felt empowered, maybe. Maybe that's the difference. I feel like. Not that you're on your own because God knows racism ain't nothing you and it's shared with many, but there's something different when you see in the table of uh, kind of warriors, you know, these just cultural, these cultural, political, intellectual kind of warriors, mothers, partners, sisters, kin. kin maybe that's it maybe the kinship made it different you went alone you went alone fighting against someone's rage someone's hatred it wasn't shocking because you've been in that situation many times but it was different this time and so I want you to kind of feel that, to see that and why that was the way it was.